these aircraft have to be operationalized at the very earliest. That message has gone in from Air Chief Marshal Bhadoria to the Indian Air Force. Absolutely, you know, because uh, as we know that the contract was signed almost three years ago uh, in 2016. And while the acquiring or acquisition process was underway, I'm quite sure that the Indian Air Force must have done all the groundwork. They must have uh, war game uh, this aircraft. They know the theoretical capabilities of these aircraft. Plus the fact that the pilots have been uh, trading in France for quite some time. They must have also flown a lot of simulator. So while it is very necessary that after they land here, that they have to go through a period of what we call consolidation. But I'm quite sure that if uh, push comes to shove, that they uh, they are they would be ready to hit the ground running. Right. And uh, that is very much uh, possible. And Air Chief Marshal Baduria has very clearly mentioned that they have to be operationalized at the earliest. And I'm sure that is going to happen. And all the weapon systems and support services must already be in place to make sure that it does happen. All right, let me take that question now across to Major General G.D. Bakshi as well. Major General G.D. Bakshi, very important uh, as Maruf was telling us that this is a message that is being given. Of course, that there has to be, you know, uh, uh, there cannot be any kind of bureaucratic red tape when it comes to defense acquisitions. Already we have a process which is an emergency process that has taken us so many long years to actually get the aircraft uh, on ground and perhaps another year and a half before that order is actually completed in terms of all the aircraft all the 36 aircraft that would be ready on Indian soil. So clearly the message also being sent out that uh, our bureaucracy cannot continue to stall time and again these very important assets for our armed forces. Uh, look, uh, in India we had a weapons acquisition process that has been mired in miles of red tape. It took us 30 years for God's sake to get a replacement for the Bohor gun. It's only started coming in last year. 30 years. You know, you, you call that due diligence and check and balance. This is a disaster. You know, the simple fact is it has taken us, the Air Force, if I remember correctly, wanted more mirages 2000 after the Kargil War. It is the French who said the, the, we have shut up the Mirage 2000 factory and if you want, you can get the Rafale. So it goes back almost two decades. This is a dysfunctional process and I think we will have to speed it up, streamline it. Of course, do your due diligence and checks and balances, but you don't take decades. Because in those decades, that the weapon system becomes obsolescent even before it lands on your side. And so uh, thank God we've been able to get the Rafale. We wanted 126. We've got the 32, I hope we'll get another 32 more. And the Navy, this is a naval uh, aircraft carrier capable aircraft. We should get it for the Navy also. It is a tremendous force multiplier. It will uh, put the fear of God in Pakistan and in uh, China. The eagle has landed. You know, this is information warfare. The Chinese have been trying to show us a number of their films of their T-15 uh, life tanks and what have you doing exercises in Tibet and doing live firing with their self-propelled gun. I think they might as well take a look at this for a change. And uh, I'm sure the message has gone home. It needs to be driven home. We have the capability, this aircraft completely outclasses the J-17, the F-16, it outclasses the J-10, the J-11, and even the so-called J-25 generation fighter our two thirties have picked it up on their radar. So it's not uh, that all these Chinese platforms are not combat proven. They haven't seen, you know, a heard a shot being fired in anger. So whether their professed capabilities will match up in the battle scene remains to be seen. This is a combat proven platform. It has been used against Libya, it has been used in Syria, it has been used in a number of other places to good effect. The message to Pakistan is, you know, that uh, next time you think of a mass casualty terror action, don't forget that the, uh, the cruise missile on this aircraft can hit you from 300 kilometers. Precision guided munition 
within meters, two to three meters of the target center. It will hit you square in the center of the eyeball. And, uh, you know, Goridke and uh, other places will now need to really get underground and hide. Right. Uh, you know, so interesting, whether, interesting observations here, uh, General Bakshi, uh, as we tell our viewers, because they're watching right now and visuals tell a completely large and grand story. All five planes have landed now. They're on the ground. The birds are on the ground. All five Rafales who've, uh, that have come to India are now landed. Yet again, as we see those visuals, those majestic visuals. And this, of course, is very succinctly. Uh, and I want to go across to Maruf on this as well. Maruf, we spoke about how uh, they can uh, take off in high altitude bases. They can take off and land at very short uh, times. This is a good example. This particular sequence that we're running right now, almost uh, at the moment it touches down, it slows down and it has the capability by the looks of it to land on warships on carriers and that's an added bonus that of course is being completely shown uh, on uh, the visuals we're running right now very very short landing time yeah uh, but you know, uh, the marine version of the rafale is slightly different uh, so whereas this puncher quite clearly doesn't require a massive air base um, there are others that would be more specifically designed into to the Navy's requirements because, uh, you know, there are various things that come into play in terms of landing and takeoff from aircraft carrier. Let me give you one example. You know, aircrafts can only come in with a certain amount of fuel load. So, if the aircrafts have excess fuel, they are required to throw them out into the sea. If they miss the runway, God forbid, because of what we see, then it would be a very, very dangerous option for the aircraft. So, uh, as Neil Armstrong, the pilot uh, who later became an astronaut and landed on the moon, he says the most difficult thing for a fighter pilot is to land an aircraft on the deck of an aircraft carrier. Uh, but having said that, let me also gain another dimension, <clears throat> and that is that what is the recent of which 28 will be single and 8 will be twin seaters. Why? Because you need to have twin seaters to train your fighter pilots. And the third thing which we need to understand is that the Rafale is capable of flying in a radius which is about little more than twice the flying radius of the Sukhois, which is about 450, 500 kilometers. Rafale is 1,000 to 1,005 kilometers. So therefore, whichever targets the Air Force had built in into the template for the Sukhois to engage in our neighborhood, we can double that range. Apart from the fact, as General Bakshi has brought out very clearly, that you know you have long distance missiles, so you may not even need to go too close to the target because you can fire everything, whatever else. But the important aspect I think that the Rafael brings to bear is the psychological impact it will have on the Air Force of our Navy. That now, even your fancy F-16s and the J-17, J-20s are not for a guarantee of safety in an air-to-air combat situation, as well as if you are looking at the option of Putting a punch into the Chinese. All right, plate all right. Yes, yes. Water, can can water cannons there. Amaru, sorry to interrupt you there, but those are the pictures coming in of the uh, water cannons that are in fact pressed into service uh, salute, to yes. welcome the water salute really yes. for all of those aircraft. This is customary at uh, air bases, uh, uh, even in civil uh, aircraft uh, situations where they touch down for the first time in a country. This is the customary welcome that is given an arch that is literally formed by the two. Uh, uh, water cannons there and uh, clearly of course the aircraft flying under it uh, a very very uh, clear picture of what is happening on ground and in fact let me take this across to Pradeep Datta who's reporting from on ground Pradeep uh, the number of pictures that we have in fact bringing uh, brought to our viewers uh, from various angles and now the ceremonial water cannon that has in fact uh, been given as a welcome to all of the five Rafale aircraft that have touched down in Ambala Pradeep 
Yes, Mato, this is ceremonial and this is customary. Whenever the new aircraft arrives, the water cannon salute is given. Exactly the same thing had happened a year back when Apache helicopters also were inducted into Air Force. That time also water cannon salute was given. And this time also the five aircraft that have landed short while back on um, Ambala Airbase touched Indian soil. Now this water cannon salute is given and in a short while RK Vadoria, Air Chief Marshal, he will be interacting with all those air warriors who flew from Abu France to Abu Dhabi and then Abu Dhabi to Indian, Air, uh, at, um, Indian airspace and then at Ambala, Charmak. So it's going to, it's a really a big day. Era of uh, Indian Air Force is definitely going to change. It's a historic thing and moment. Throughout day, in fact, where our feet were on ground, our head was held high on shoulders, our eyes were towards sky, and moment we saw these Rafale aircraft entering Ambala airspace, our chest expanded with pride, and it gave us goosebumps. All of us were excited to see. For that one glimpse we were waiting for the whole day, you can very well understand what must be the case of each and every Indian right now, because this is a significant historic moment. This is really going to bring a big change so far as Indian ever. Air Force combat ca capa capability is concerned. So a big day, one can very well understand how happy everybody is because throughout day we saw massive security arrangement, we saw helicopter patrolling sky because no fly zone has been uh, declared so far as Ambala Air Base was concerned. No other flight other than Rafal was to be welcomed to this area. First we heard that naval ship sending a very good message that glory on sky and welcome to India and that was a message which we heard and that was a really heartening message and then as the scene of these aircrafts entering Ambala airspace and then finally landing and now this ceremonial this salute water cannon salute this is how the aircrafts are being received we have happy homecoming because for months together these air warriors had been undergoing training five Rafale aircrafts are still there uh, they will be continually, continuously will be used for further training and by the end of this year as Srinjo was saying they will be coming back to India and by the end of 2021 we will be getting 36 aircraft that means we are going to give but we are not only going to bolster our air defense we are going to give a boost to the combat capability of Indian Air Force while these aircraft were thundering over the Ambala skies a message was sent loud and clear to Pakistan just few hundred kilometers away from this air base that India has got the capability and firepower to challenge any kind of misadventure from your side if you are thinking of any misadventure with the help of China beware because Indian aircraft has arrived. It has a capability to shoot down any of your missiles. It has a capability to shoot out any of your aircraft and also air to ground strike and decimate any of your fortified structure while being in airspace, not coming into your airspace. All right, Pradeep, so that is in our first caller how today is Vivek. Uh, Vivek is our first caller. He's calling in from Jumri Talia. Go ahead. Uh, well, I wanted to know from our uh, uh, experts and defense experts. Yes. Uh, as they said, it will uh, bring a lot of change in our defense system and it will uh, be a cause of deterrence to our enemies. But how effective these five would be and how much more numbers should be added? Well, we're getting 36, but I'll let you uh, let our guests. It's, uh, it's a experts. debatable point. We have yes. been talking about that to our experts as well. Uh, let's get in a word, in fact, from uh, Maruf. Maruf, uh, a lot of estimates. We've been discussing this time and again over the past couple of hours, but uh, this is really what the citizens want to know. These five, uh, how much of an impact will they have? Uh, how much of impact will the 36 have? And of course, ultimately, what is the real number that we should be looking at acquiring in the coming years? See, unlike uh, Air Force officers, I am not sold out on the idea of 126 aircraft. Uh, my view is that uh, immediately this arrival has a psychological edge. Militarily, when all 36 arrive, we'll be able to provide us a reasonable military uh, counter capability to any adventurism. And in the long run, I think budgets being what they are, and India needs to put in money in a whole lot of things as the COVID experience has shown us. I think if we were to settle in for another 36, which makes a total of 72 fighter aircrafts of this variant, uh, apart from the LCA, which is will come in as the second string aircraft, and we have considerable number of Sukhois, even if there is weight and tear of the Mirage and others, I think a total of 
with 72 rafales for the air force should uh, alter uh, the equation in the region considerably please remember that one rafale is capable as per statistics available to us of taking on three F-16s and probably four upwards of Chinese fighters. So therefore, you know, the whole rationale of 42 squadrons, which has been prevalent from the 60s to 70s, needs to change now based on the operational capability available uh, with the, the equipment, which is certainly, in my mind, two aircrafts or more rolled into one. All right. Very, very significant. In fact, uh, let's also get a word from... Uh, right. I can see Major General G.D. Bakshi's hand going up. Yes, sir. After the 62 war, when a set assessment was made, we had asked for 60 squadron Air Force. Then, with the capability of the aircraft increasing, it was spared down to 45, which has further been brought down to 42. Today, we are less than 30. So there is no way that we can accept that disparity given a two-front threat. So I think we need, at the very least, we must go in for at least, uh, you know, as uh, Maruf was saying, 72, four squadrons of the Rafal, and you could also in that base on your naval wing, because the, it has been flying, uh, flying off the carriers of the French. The French are flying the Rafal of the naval eye version of that. So we'll have commonality of equipment instead of another aircraft like the F-18 or something, the Hornet coming in. We could go in for more of these. It's a very capable 4.5 generation aircraft. We need to speed up the LCA. They are asking for 80 more. But the simple fact is that the HAL is going to produce it at the scale pace of 8 aircraft a year. Well, we will beat a disaster. Well, before that, if something happens, why should we go in for emergency purchases when there are very well laid out plans of 15 years horizon we have been talking of? The very fact that you have to go in for emergency purchases when a thing like what has happened in Ladakh arises shows that uh, the bureaucrats have been bubbling it up. Right, Royal. We now need to get our act together, streamline our weapons acquisition system, and I'm afraid military capabilities don't come cheap. So, I mean, it's all very well to say that we will fight COVID. We might as well deal with the enemy. You don't right. want valid the war. Point there. Valid point. General Bakshi, you know, stay on with us. We also have our callers calling in right now. Venkatesh from Bengaluru is our first caller. Go ahead, Venkatesh. Hey, good afternoon, uh, Bakshi sir. Namaskaram. Uh, sir, uh, to quote one of a uh, famous or not famous, infamous politician in the Lok Sabha who calls himself Papu, what I would say is, you know, itna paisa kharcha, maybe we got a one-seater only. On a more serious note, I think, uh, you know, when you're surrounded by hooliganism in the neighbors, among the neighboring countries, one needs to respond in from a position of strength. Right. Peace doesn't come from a position of weakness. No, so clearly, fully agree with thank you for your sir. call. We'll uh, ask General Bakshi to answer your question, but first we'll take another caller right now, Amit from Delhi. Go ahead, Amit. Uh, yeah, we are very happy. The entire nation is very happy to receive fighter jets after so many years. But again, I really agree with the previous caller. Where is Mr. Rahul Gandhi? Some journalist should find out because we are hearing that he is not in the country. Rafael has come. Rafael has come in India and he has gone out of the country during Corona period. Some journalist, some reporter, somebody should find out whether he is in India or not. All right, I think Amit, thank you for big... calling in. We have uh, Rohan uh, Mohan. I beg your pardon. Mohan from Bengaluru. Mohan, please go ahead. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Welcome, sir, Rafael. A great confident builder. And we saw eight squadron eight score of this. And I have to the government of India thinking of alternate to a vertical aircraft weapon that has such an E. Another eight squadrons, sir. Added to that, we have a four, four squadron of F-35, four squadron of MAG-35. We'll fit the bill where none of the enemies can dare of thinking of attacking India, invading India. Okay. Not even an inch, live about an inch, even a millimeter of land. Oh, clearly, clearly. Thank you, Mohan, for calling in. Kailash from Mumbai is our next caller. Kailash, go ahead, please. 
Yeah, thank you so much for having. Uh, so wonderful news. We are very excited, very happy. Uh, we are talking about two front war. In fact, it's a more than two front war. It's a three front war. We are also fighting our internal enemy, and the leader of that enemy, uh, enemy is unfortunately out of out of country. I agree with some caller who spoke. Why don't somebody, uh, some journalist, uh, search for Rahul Gandhi? It will be the biggest breaking news, sir. Okay. Somebody should search for me. Why no journalist is asking where is Rahul Gandhi? But Why maybe nobody, Kailash, you no should, you should start. Uh, you should start that. Maybe you can tell us where he is. Thank you for calling in. We have Sherali uh, calling in from Mumbai. Sherali, go ahead, please. Yeah, good afternoon. A very, very proud moment, Jai Hind, to the entire country, and yes. a very, very proud moment. I, I believe for every Indian and every Indian at heart and everybody in the world. And more so for uh, Prime Minister uh, Narendra Modi ji and uh, uh, Rajnath Singh ji, our Raksha Mantri, who have uh, proven to the world, proven to India, that they have managed to get this thing cracking and finally the birds are in. All right, thank you for calling in, uh, Mr. Shirali. We also have visuals now on the screen of the INS Kolkata, the Indian naval warship that contacted and had the first conversation uh, of uh, uh, the in Indian airspace with the five Rafales that came in today. Uh, we also have that conversation. Let's take a look. Welcome to the Indian Ocean. Naval warship Delta 63, arrow leader. Many thanks. Most reassuring to have an Indian warship guarding the seas. Arrow leader Delta 63, may you touch the sky with glory. Happy landings. Delta 63, Arrow Leader, wish you fair winds. Happy hunting over and out. Leader, Indian Naval Warship Delta 63, welcome to the Indian Ocean. Naval Warship Delta 63, Arrow Leader, many thanks. Most reassuring to have an Indian warship guarding the seas. Arrow Leader, Delta 63. May you touch the sky with glory. Happy landings. Delta 63, Arrow Leader, wish you fair winds. Happy hunting over and out. All right, that, of course, was conversation that we first played on Times Now. Uh, the conversation between the Indian Naval warship that welcomed the Rafales into Indian airspace. Uh, let me quickly go back to uh, all our guests who are joining us. And before we go to our guest, Pradeep, uh, who's been getting us all the latest from Ambala, let me just come to you uh, for a second here. Great work by our video journalist Amit there. He captured the Rafales. Uh, uh, two angles I saw, of course, no other channel has those visuals. First of all, great work both of you. Uh, what is the situation there now? We understand Air Chief Marshal R.K. Baduria was already there, uh, formally welcoming the five pilots as well. Uh, give us the lowdown from your end. Uh, yes, Sachar, this is going to be a proud moment both for Air Warriors as well as for the Indian Air Force, for Indian Air Force because they will be getting a fighter jet that's going to, in fact, bolster their combat capability. And for Air Warriors that they were able to come back home safely uh, with these fighter jets and they will be received by none other than Air Chief Marshal R.K. Baduria who is going to interact with them. He's going to know about their experience of flying this jet, try to find out whether they face any kind of a problem because it was not, not an easy journey. It's not a bigger aircraft. They have to sit in cockpit for hours to together because they had only one stopover that was at the Abu Dhabi air base from where they started early morning and finally they reached this place though the, uh, the sky was overcast with clouds as you have seen that it was not easy to capture those visuals I jokingly told Amit Bhardwaj I said this is a stealth bomber which even the radar can't uh, track down but you were able to capture that with the camera because throughout the day our eyes were towards the sky because we wanted to have glimpse of this aircraft the moment it thundered over the Ambala skies and there were goosebumps all of us were excited. The chest expanded with pride the moment it entered and landed finally and touched the Indian uh, uh, land. So this was a proud moment for each and every Indian. Each and every Indian was waiting for this moment because it's going to skip new era so far as Indian Air Force is concerned. And it sent a very strong message while it was thundering over the Indian skies. It was also sending a message to Pakistan that don't ever think of any kind of misadventure. If you will try to go for any kind of a misadventure, then we have an answer. 
Rafal. And Rafal is definitely going to teach you the lesson because earlier we had a problem we lacked so far a sensor and long range engagement was concerned. But now we have got a weaponry system which has got a range of about 300 to 500 kilometers. And we have been talking about earlier, we have been talking about scalp air to ground missile that can decimate any fortified structure. So with this kind of a weaponry, with this kind of sensor, with such a advanced avionics and with electronic warfare system that cannot have, in fact, allow these adversaries to jam aircraft. So one, one can definitely say that Indian Air Force is definitely going to hedge, have an edge. Everybody will be waiting for another five to come by the end of this year and 36 to be here by 2021. But yes, the France has also kept the promise, despite because it's very important that a strategic relationship between France and the Indian diplomacy that has worked, because we have seen that there had been a problem of corona despite COVID. It was on June 2nd when the Defence Minister Rajnath Singh spoke to his counterpart in France and uh, she assured Rajnath Singh, whatever the circumstances, difficulties and situation because of COVID-19, they will ensure that by scheduled date and time, they will be getting the first consignment and the first batch of Rafal aircraft. And that has happened. And this is definitely going to give an edge at a time when China is already trying to flex its muscle. China is trying to play All a spoil right. sport. So stay far with us. Stay with us, uh, along Pradeep, the line of a very significant control. point that you mentioned there was India's cooperation as far as air defense is concerned with France, a relationship that has in fact lasted for many decades. In fact, joining us on the broadcast right now is uh, Air Marshal Andre. Let me take that question across to him, sir. A very significant relationship and the Rafale, just the latest in a series of aircraft uh, that are bringing the two countries closer as far as defense cooperation, specifically air defense cooperation are concerned. Air, air Marshal Andre, can you hear me, sir? All right, I think we have a problem there with that audio. We will try and reconnect with uh, Air Marshal Atre. But let me take this question across to Major General G.D. Bakshi, who's also with us on the broadcast. Uh, Major General G.D. Bakshi, a relationship between the two countries, India and France, that has, you know, been on for several decades. And uh, this uh, latest in the series of uh, that defense cooperation that will, of course, uh, not just bring the two countries together, but also be a force multiplier as far as India's own defense capabilities are concerned. Look, the, uh, the relationship between India and France goes back to almost the 1950s uh, when we got the Oregons and the Bistiers, you know. And uh, then, of course, uh, we've had the Mirage 2000. Uh, we had the MX-13 uh, uh, light tanks from France. Then the Mirage 2000 proved to be a great game changer in Kargil. The Air Force were delighted with the serviceability of its aircraft, with its ability to deliver precision-guided, laser-guided munitions, which uh, knocked out the Mutho Dalo Pakistani air base in Kargil, the uh, logistic base in Kargil, and uh, made a great difference uh, to the whole battlefield, you know, by its uh, mass effect, by massing effects in the rear. Uh, in fact, the Indian Air Force wanted to go in for two, three squadrons more of Mirage's 2000. And when we asked the French, they said they are closing up that factory. You want to buy that factory? Fine, but I we missed the chance because of our bureaucratic uh, red tape. Uh, then, of course, we, we decided to go in for the Rafale because we were delighted with the kind of capabilities that the Mirage 2000 gave us. And you know the Mirage 2000 was again used in Balakot to very good effect. So the Indo-French uh, strategic partnership goes back a very long time. Don't forget, this is one of the few countries that did not impose sanctions on us post the nuclear explosion. They continue. They are very reliable, time-tested partners. They have continued to supply us weapons and equipment. Uh, even when America and everybody else had stopped, they had put uh, a ban on us after the uh, Shakti series of explosions, nuclear right. explosions. This is one country which continues right throughout. And uh, we hopefully right. should uh, just, be able I'm sorry to, to interrupt you there, but there's Rafale. a tweet coming in from Home Minister Amit Shah, who has just put out this tweet saying the Rafale touchdown is a historic day for our victorious Indian Air Force and a proud moment for India. These are the world's most powerful machines capable to thwart any challenge in the sky. I'm sure Rafale will help our air warriors safeguard our skies with its mighty superiority. So, very, very significant uh, that we have, in fact, a tweet coming. 
coming in there from the Home Minister. Uh, let's go across to Wing Commander Atre, who's with us now on the broadcast. Wing Commander Atre, uh, the Home Minister, to tweeting saying that this is among the world's most capable aircraft. And uh, after a grueling journey, uh, now the Rafale touching down in India, certainly a very historic and a very big moment as far as India's air defense capabilities are concerned. Absolutely. There, is no, there should be no doubt in anybody's mind. At least I have no doubt. Today is a very historic day. The 17th squadron is getting five golden arrows today. And it's going to be soon 18 golden arrows for 17th squadron, which is sending a very, very deterrent message. Those who are scurping in our borders to attack India. We are ready. Come what may. We are not going to bow down and take your dumkey and all that. We are there to make sure that India as a country and its sovereignty is protected at all times to come. And what a time to get these Rafals when there was unnecessary tensions being built up in the eastern sector of Ladakh and the time France, which was supposed to hand over these aeroplanes to India about 15, 20 days hence, has advanced the date of handing over these aeroplanes and given us before time that shows that the entire world is standing with India and India's solidarity to fight and it's a nation like China, which is highly un untrustful nation, a distrustful nation, which can go to any limit to prove its agenda, is today put in its place. One small request, Mother, he is not Major, he is Major General Bakshi. There is a lot of difference between a Major and a Major General in the Army. I request you to address him as a General, that will be better. As the General was pointing out, even in the Kargil War in 1999, it was the induction of Mirage 2000, when we lost some of the helicopters to the Pakistani General, sir, they know, uh, missiles. General. We took uh, we, a break and thought yeah. that we must right. Right. So let we me must just... attack them with Mirage 2000, which was highly, highly lethal to the Pakistan.